Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. Welcome everybody on this beautiful and glorious morning. My name is Christy Weimer and I am your pulpit assistant this morning. On behalf of the congregation, we welcome any new attendees today. So that we may have record of your attendance, please pass, um, sign and pass the friendship pad down your aisle. Are there any special announcements this morning? Good morning. <clears throat> I wanted everybody to know this Wednesday at 6 p.m., we're going to have our first ever Blue Christmas. And Blue Christmas service, if you're not familiar with it, it's commonly called the longest night. And December the 21st is literally the winter solstice and is the longest night of the year. This time of year is not so jolly uh, for some. And we want to acknowledge that and we want to offer this sanctuary, this place of sacred worship uh, to those folks that are having a hard time, difficult times. Uh, maybe this season you've lost a loved one in the year and you want to come and, and just reflect and, and be. Um, so I just encourage you, if you know anyone or if you're that person, uh, please come Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 21st at 6 p.m. and uh, seek healing with all of us. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Then let us worship the Lord. I'd like to welcome the Stennett family up for the lighting of the candle. Good morning. Today we're going to celebrate the lighting of the candle. In the season of Advent, we light the candle for hope to symbolize that God through Jesus Christ's birth bringing gives hope to one another in ways of relating nation to nation. We light the candle of peace, which symbolizes the peace given to all humanity 
and accept in Jesus Christ's new way of living amidst the communities. We light the candle of joy with the understanding that with all creation that is dry will burst forth in rejoicing and singing as Jesus the excuse me the Christ is born. Today we light the candle of love. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The Lord will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and she'll bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. God is with us. Let us all walk in hope, peace, joy, and the love of Christ. If you are able, please stand and join me in the call to worship. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the Lord's name. Tell of the Lord's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. God's marvelous works among all the peoples. You may be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, we confess that sometimes our joy is not shown in our areas of life and worship. We sometimes think too much about our sin and not enough on the joy of the resurrection. Help us, O oh God, find the joy in the divine coming into the world that is beyond presence, people's judgment, and fears in any form. Forgive us, O oh God, for not embracing the joy and love found in Jesus Christ coming into the world.
And all God's people said, Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. We declare God's promises in the name of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As we hear and see the water poured into the baptismal font, let us embrace our forgiveness in Jesus Christ, which brings joy. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Stand, show signs of peace to your neighbors next to you. Let's go to God in prayer, joining your spirit with mine. Interceding God, you have instructed us to offer prayers for not only ourselves, but for the church, the world, the nations, and our community and our loved ones. In this season of waiting and in preparation of coming gift in Christ the Lord, who is now here and we come thinking of others. We offer the church in its whole with its members known and unknown to renew it with the inbreaking of God becoming flesh revealed in Jesus the Christ. Let us ponder as, Ma as Mary, the mother of Jesus, what this means for the next year in our individual home life. Bring us to an understanding that affects our way as we live toward you in the new year and others. 
Help us be a better witness to the hope, peace, joy, and love found in Christ's coming. We intercede for the world which acknowledges the Russian and Ukrainian war still lit. Families still fearful of violence, bombs, killing, and creating chaos in the land. Refugees flee. Resources are interrupted. Oh God, assist each person in this war time. Let us not stop praying for peace. In the British news, four migrants drowned in an attempt to gain asylum in the English Channel. We pray for a day that all ethnic groups will be able to not be chased out of their land, fear for life, or even uh, have enough resources to be safe in their land. Assist all who sojourn and be with those who grieve, loved ones who died in the attempt at a better life. We offer our nation where asylum seekers pour into El Paso, Texas, anticipating the end of Title 42. With the holidays and the influx of people, it's difficult to maintain healthy families and weary travelers. Oh God, the traveler's road is difficult and seems dangerous. Help those who travel seeking freedom, safe travel as they risk their lives. We pray for our military families who endure a long time away from family and loneliness. We pray for those veterans who wear the scars of trauma and mental illness inside their bodies and their minds. Give them peace and clarity of mind. Help them heal and get support. We pray for our, all our political leaders and our president to make good decisions for all the people in the USA and foreign policy. We offer our community as we feel the temperature dropping and wondering how the homeless will stay warm in the cold. Assist them in this time of difficulty, whether it be a lack of a home, financial resources, or mental health, or those who this time of year bring sadness and hurt. Lift up all spirits in our community, whether in a caregiving role or the one who helps come. We intercede for our loved ones in grief, such as the Weeks family, the Baker and Parnell, the McCrum and the Bunnell, Leslie, Laura, Kelly, the Scott family, Joyce and Jeff. We give you thanks for recovery from surgery with Bob and Peg. We pray for general health concerns like Carrie and Roger, Mary Louise, Ethel, Jane, Barbara, Anita and Bob, we ask you to continue healing and comfort for Doug, Ray, Lynn, Dot, Gail, Stephen, Linda, Bob, Georgia, Glady, Ron, Phil, Lois, Peg, Linda and Richard, Jim and Shirley, and we pray for Eddie as he goes toward surgery. We pray for those to increase their coping skills with new health issues like Debbie. We pray for all who are homebound this day and cannot get physically here in this sanctuary to experience your presence with all that are gathered. For those who are unable to say what their need and prayer is, we become silent. Gracious God, strengthen us as we seek endurance in our intercession, faith for the journey, and love for all people. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I would like to ask Mary Bunch to come to the pulpit and give a minute for mission from your stewardship team. Good morning. Um, many of you have already turned in your pledge cards. We are very grateful that you have. Um, we would like for everyone to turn one in. 
so that we can plan for next year. But what I want to talk to you this morning is about the connection card that was also in your envelope that you received. If you um, have already turned yours in, or if you did not get one for some reason, there are some in the pews. There's at least two in every pew, one on either end, behind your hymn book or someplace. And if you have already turned one in, I'm hoping you'll want to revise it. <laughs> what I want to talk to you about is um, we, we have, this is what's formerly known as the time and talent sheet. We revised it so much that we had to rename it. So we're calling it the connection card. It's front and back. And you'll notice under every committee, there is a blank that says other. And that is very specifically what I want to talk to you about. We are hoping to get every single person in the church more involved. Whether you are eight or 98, we want you to find a place to get involved and a, a, something that you can commit to on that connection card. So under each committee, there's a line that says other. A few weeks ago, all of the officers in the church, the current officers, the ones going off, and the ones um, that will be officers next year, we all got together for a visioning meeting one Sunday afternoon. And we just sat in committees and brainstormed about where we want our church to go. And I want you, on that line that says other, to write something that you would like to see our church, your church, involved in. Something new, something we're not doing, something we used to do, something that you would like to get involved with. And dream. What, what is it you would like to see us do? If not next year, then the, in the next three years or in the next five years, what would you like to see happen? So please, 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 um, the new officers are excited. I'm excited, and, and I'm one of the ones going off, but I'm excited to see where our church is going, and I'm excited to hear from you. Thank you. comes a time where we offer ourself to the Lord through our time, talents, and our financial resources. Let us go to God in prayer for the offertory. Please pray with me. Gracious God, as we reflect on this season and this preparing and waiting for Christ, the Messiah, to come this Christmas, we offer ourselves in our heart, mind, and soul to you reflecting on and examining our own life and our relationship with you, the God that will be coming into the world. God, be with us in a special way as we reflect and examine our own existence and how we follow Jesus Christ. We thank you for the time and talents of all folks, Lord. God, open us to new opportunities, new ways of serving, and new ways of giving. In Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Ushers, please come.
me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ in breaking into the world and giving the world salvation for all who believe, O God. We thank you for the time and the talents and all the gifts that are given throughout the year and today. God, we give you thanks for generous hearts that continue to push the mission of the kingdom of God here at South Aiken on and creating a legacy of followers of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks. God, we especially give you thanks in the Lord's Prayer that you taught your disciples long ago and even teach us now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. The scripture involved uh, in this cantata. So God will be speaking directly through this music and the words of all of the narration. So let us go to God in prayer. Great God, we pray that your word comes to fruition in our hearts and our minds. God, allow us to listen to your Holy Spirit that brings the message to us personally in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. God, lift our spirits to you. God, allow us to receive your message in Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you. 
is a day of celebration, a time to worship Christ, the newborn King, a moment to cherish and glory of Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. This is an hour to recall and rejoice in the wonder and mystery of the incarnation story when God sent himself in the form of a baby, the Messiah, to become one of us, that we might become one with him. This is the hope of Christmas. Israel, the chosen people of God, were a people walking in darkness, living in a land of deep darkness. For generations, they toiled under the oppressive rule of Egypt, living in bondage and torture, longing to experience release from their captivity, yearning for a savior who would come and deliver them from their pain and sorrow. Their sustaining hope was found in a profound conviction that a Messiah would eventually come to save them, that this savior would one day deliver them from their long days of darkness to a place of perpetual light. It was this hope, this promise, which carried them forward when they were weary with the daily tasks of life. And it is this same hope which sustains us in the journey of faith and life that this Messiah, this Deliverer, comes to us when we need him most. Children, don't grow weary, for the time is drawing nigh. In due time, God sent a prophet who issued a clarion call that the time was indeed near. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. This prophet, this forerunner of the Messiah, was a man named John. 
His father, Zechariah, had faithfully served the Lord as a priest. John was to be blessed with the spirit and power of Elijah, gifts that would prepare the hearts of people, young and old, for the coming Messiah. This was the promise of Christmas. God's plan for sending a savior was far different than anyone could have imagined. He chose a young woman by the name of Mary to give birth to this one he was sending to rescue and redeem his children. The angel Gabriel greeted Mary. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You are to bear a child, a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Mary was overwhelmed at the news. In amazement and wonder, she exclaimed, But how can this be? The angel responded, The power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the Holy One to be born 
will be called the Son of God. In humble response, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. This is the wonder of Christmas. My soul rejoices in the Lord. I've seen his love and his power proclaimed. His faithful servant, I shall be. I'll bear his child. Jesus is his name. To the Lord Most High, He comes to set His people free. God with us, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, for you. Mary and Joseph, to whom she was to be married, had gone to Bethlehem for a census of the entire Roman world. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there had been no room for them in the inn.
The Messiah, the Savior of the world, had been born in the remote village of Bethlehem with no one other than Mary and Joseph to witness this miraculous event. But God's plan included a means of making the fulfilled promise public. There were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks out in the fields nearby that night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly... A great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. This is the majesty of Christmas.
when the angels had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds, still basking in the glow of the amazing encounter with God's redemption story, said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened and which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, the chosen servant of God, the mother of the newborn Christ child, treasured up all these things as she pondered them in her heart. This is the mystery of Christmas. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. 
on those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has shined. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the reign of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem in search of the young child. Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. After determining where the prophets had foretold that Jesus would be born, Herod sent the Magi to Bethlehem, saying, Go and make a careful search for the child, then report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. They went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to the place where the child was. They bowed down and worshipped him as they offered their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Guided by a shining star in the east, these magi had found the bright and morning star, the eternal light of heaven. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. This is the brilliance of Christmas.
The perfect light, Jesus, son of the living God, came to deliver not only Israel from her long dark night, but also to guide us on our journey of faith. The sun will no longer be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. In him was life, and that life was the light to all people. Jesus has come. The word now flesh who made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. This is the glory of Christmas.
Let us show them the glory of God working through them again. Let us show our praise. Now may the, please rise for the benediction. Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen.